Good evening. We are here tonight. Oh, that's intimidating. We're here tonight for the Cecil Township Comprehensive Plan public hearing. We've been working on this project, the steering committee has for the last year, and we're excited to present it to you tonight. We began with our first meeting back in May 2018, and the steering committee members appointed by the Board of Supervisors uh, have been meeting several times over that year-long period. Many of them are here tonight, and they're going to present the plan to the Board of Supervisors at this public hearing, and then there'll be an opportunity for public comment as well. The next step in the process will be after the hearing is closed tonight, the Township Supervisors at a future public meeting would consider adoption of the comprehensive plan. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jason, a member of the steering committee, who's going to kick us off. I'm going to click for you, so just say next. Good evening. Um, so I'm pretty excited about tonight. We, uh, as, as Jason, said, can you state your name, for, your full name for the record? Absolutely. Uh, my name is Jason Crutt. I'm a... Um, Resident of Cecil Township, I'm on the Comp uh, Comprehensive Plan Steering Committee. I'm also a member of the Planning Commission. And i um, really excited about being here tonight. As John said, this has been a... Can I interrupt you for one second? Can I have anybody who plans to testify or speak in this public hearing um, stand up and swear in? Sorry. You want to... Shoulder up. I do. do. Thank you. Sorry. Continue. Okay. Where was I now? Sorry about that. It's okay. So, um, the plan that's currently in place is 23, 23 years old. Is that correct, John? Mm -hmm. 23 years old. Um, you know, there's a lot that has changed in this township since then. Um, the, the, the makeup of the, the demographics of the community have changed substantially. The, uh, the size, the population has changed substantially. The demands on infrastructure have changed dramatically. Uh, South Point, uh, the, the new construction of 576. Uh, the plan, you know, is, while the plan was, that's currently in place, while it was a good plan, 23 years ago, no longer meets the needs of this community. And so uh, it, was one of the, it was one of the reasons why I got on the Planning Commission was to try to, because um, I saw a need for us to, as a community, put together a new plan um, to look at, you know, to come together as a community, look at where we've been, and determine together where we want to go. And that's really what the plan is. That, that's how you come about this plan. Um, I, I, we met in this room. There's a large group of us. And it was a very diverse group of residents that met in this room. And we talked about a lot of things. There was, um, I've been a resident of this, of this township for 10 years. I've been coming to township meetings of various sorts for nine. And I can assure you that any hot topic, hot button issue, or divisive issue in this, that has been in this township in the last 10 years, or at least nine, uh, we discussed it in these meetings. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of discussion, a lot of research, a lot of compromise, because while we all have different ideas about where we think the township is, what we think the strengths and weakness are, weaknesses are, and where we want the township to go, we all had an agreement on one very important thing. And that was that we wanted to all see the township move together in the right direction. And so uh, you can't get there without compromise and um, and uh, open discussion. And uh, that's exactly what these meetings were. Um, this, this is a township that, as, as is going to be discussed, I believe, 
I think at times struggles for an identity. Um, you know, it's a collection. Uh, I mean, uh, in some ways, the township is a collection of various mining communities. That's how the township began. The from there, it has grown in, in many, many different directions, and um, it's we we did a really. We found it very important for us to take all those, take the history into consideration, take the growth into consideration, what has been happening, good, bad, and different, discuss it, and come up with a solid plan about where we wanted to go. So um, without any further ado, I'm going to pass it on to my um, partnership. My name is Christy Budovich. Would you like me to spell that for you? K-R-I-S-T-Y B-U-D-A-V-I-C-H. <laughs> I normally have heels on. <laughs> I'm not wearing heels at this point in time. Um, but thank you so much, supervisors, for having us here tonight. Um, and as Jason introduced, a lot of what the steering committee has done, uh, I want to just briefly go over with you really the purpose of a comprehensive plan. I know it has plan in the title, but um, I think words can oftentimes be deceiving because it is not an outline saying, hey, this is exactly how it's going to go. It's more of a guidebook and uh, just a kind of a guiding light to say, hey, as things progress in the township over the next one, five, 10, 20 years, here's where we think it can go. Here's where we think it's going to go. And here are the, the parameters and the structure that we would recommend to say, hey, here's how the township can grow best. Um, as Jason mentioned, there are a lot of things. You can go to the two more slides ahead. Um, as Jason had mentioned as well, um, there was a lot of discussion and a lot of differing opinions of a group of about um, 12 to 14 folks. Not every single person was able to make every single meeting. Um, however, we did start the discussion on what the comprehensive plan could be and how we could update it from the 23-year-old version at that time. And from that discussion, we also said, hey, we are not the township as a whole. We want to hear from our community. We want to hear what the community has to say. And from the responses that were sent out from the survey, as well as interviews from key stakeholders within the community, uh, we had a, a pretty even response to really what the steering committee was saying collectively when we met. Um, so we were on the same page, but we, we did reach out to the community to say, hey, how does that look? Let's make sure it's not just us making a decision because a couple people alone are not a township. Um, we did take that public input summary. And you can go to the next one. Um, and we said, okay, based on those things, how can we best prioritize? Um, where do we think the township can best prioritize for how to grow in the next decade or so because normally comprehensive plans are updated every 10 years or so not 23. Um, so we took that information and we said hey here's these pillars here's these steps of where we really think we can focus because um, as Michelle will talk about later we have um, strategies to implement to achieve these goals and we have a long list of strategies to achieve each goal. That doesn't mean it's feasible that every single one of those strategies can be implemented in, that, in this time until the comprehensive plan is updated again. They're just suggestions and, and, and um, bulleted ideas to say, here's a potential way to achieve these strategies. Next one. Um, with that, we looked into the fact that while um, everybody might want to do everything, it's not always feasible financially. And we have to be responsible financially as a township, which the supervisors do with making sure our, ball our budget is balanced. Um, we talked a lot, as Jason had mentioned, about several different issues, one of them being, hey, here's the sewage infrastructure. To do all of these changes at once, at once isn't feasible for that budget amount alone. Um, but in an ideal world, what would it look like? Because that's what we're going to do as a guide. Um, and we trust that our elected officials are going to say, hey, we hear what you're saying. This is a guide for what is the priority. Um, but here's how we're going to prioritize that 
to get, uh, let's say, a, a bite of the elephant, one bite at a time. Um, go to the next one. One of the things that uh, was definitely a hot button issue that we had a lot of discussion about and used a lot of markers and post-its on was this future land use map. And I believe Mr. Trant has a large copy here for anybody that wants to look at it. But I want to stress that, as I've said, that even though this is titled a comprehensive plan, it's a guidebook, um, this future land use map does not change any zoning, nor does anything in the comprehensive plan change any zoning. That would be an entirely different process. Um, this is just a guideline to say, hey, if there is updates in zoning, we would recommend this is what we think it could look like. So this is a proposed future land use map, and I want to make sure that's very clear for the supervisors as well as the constituents of the supervisors. And with that, I'm going to turn this over to Michelle. Michelle Stonemark, S-T-O-N-E-M-A-R-K. So like Christy said, and Jason before her, um, we had a lot of long meetings, long contentious battle meetings um, about what we thought were the goals that we needed to focus on primarily in the next 10 years. Um, the ones I'm gonna go over with you are the ones that we felt were the most important to touch upon um, sort of first. Um, if you're in your comprehensive plan, if you're looking at it, I'm going to basically be going through all of the, if you start on page 37, everything that was highlighted in the maroon boxes, that's pretty much where I'm gonna be presenting from. Do we have any in the box? Yeah, I gave uh, Jack a couple copies. I actually don't have one either. There was one short. I Jack has, I brought some extra copies of the uh, vision and recommendation sections. It's okay. I can share with Frank. It's not a big deal. I need to read mine. You're, I need to you're read fine. Mine. You can keep it. I can share with Frank. So we're on page 37 for everybody. Um, one of the biggest things that we discussed as something that we need to work on in this township was infrastructure. Um, so we set some goals in mind for our infrastructure. Um, some of them are focused on older neighborhoods that are underserved by existing sewer and stormwater infrastructure. I think that everyone can agree that, you know, we do have some stormwater issues in this township. We have some sewer issues in this township. People still don't have sewage in this township. Um, some more infrastructure, implement a capital improvement plan for all capital projects across the township and include cost estimates and potential funding sources. Seek funding opportunities through state agencies to increase service offerings to older neighborhoods. Educate residents on stormwater mitigation best practices for their properties and adopt a transportation impact fee program to generate funds for transportation infrastructure improvements that go beyond our annual paving project. Um, these are just some ideas that we came up with that we felt were the strong points of what we need to do with our current, to update our current infrastructure. And they go more into detail once you go into the back when we get into specific goals. If we flip to page 40, we have goals for future development. Um, one of the biggest things that we talked about were our ordinances and how we needed, a lot of our ordinances were out of date. Um, so one of the first ones was update the township zoning map and ordinance to align with and complement the future land use map. Um, which again, the future land use map is just a guideline. It is not, does not actually change anything. And if anybody actually wanted to change or change the zoning of their property, it would have to actually either be changed through changing the zoning map, which I think you guys are currently working on now, updating the zoning map. Um, and if somebody wanted to individually change their property, they would have to go through a whole separate hearing to do that. Um, we also wanted to encourage increased open space requirements in future planned residential developments to protect our natural resources and preserve green space. Um, we wanted to do a complete market analysis to dis determine future development, potential of key industry sectors, 
and protect residential area areas from negative impacts from non-residential development. Uh, we also set some goals for future housing, which is on page 41. Um, to encourage development of alternative housing, such as multifamily, townhomes, quads, or condominiums to serve young professionals and families moving into the community, as well as residents wishing to age within the township. Support the new development of strong neighborhoods with community enhancing amenities, which will increase the property value and enhance Cecil's tax base. And increase property maintenance efforts throughout the township, paying special attention to the community's older homes to improve li living conditions, mitigate blight, and offer additional public services. We also have some goals for our natural resources on page 42. To create an environment with a healthy balance between development, natural resources, and historical assets. To preserve Cecil's natural assets and environmentally sensitive areas, including plant life, steep slopes, floodplains, wetlands, and stream corridors. To encourage development best practices to protect biodiversity areas adjacent to potential new development. And to evaluate the appropriate areas for gas wells through zoning ordinance re revisions. Sorry. And we also have some goals for our historical assets. Complete a township branding campaign to highlight the township's unique qualities and create a unifying identity and message for the community. We want to partner with the Historical Society to protect, preserve, and highlight the community's historical areas. Create, a marketing, create marketing materials promoting the community's unique historical and natural assets. And construct gateway signage along the key corridors which I think is huge, but I won't go into that. And lastly, we have, um, we had some suggestions for um, updating the operations and staffing at the township level. Um, we wanted to foster a dynamic, proactive, responsible governance system to increase staffing capacity to fill service gaps, implement the comprehensive plan, and better respond to the community's needs. Implement new communication measures to improve outreach efforts to residents and continues funding efforts for the construction of a new public works facility. Now, like we said many times, all of these are just the main issues that we all felt were the most important in the township um, that we needed to focus on first. Um, if you flip over to page 49, 48 and 49, it gets into a little more specific about goals on how to achieve these things. Um, and gives us a time frame of suggestions, what we could do, the time frame of when we should do it within one year, five years, 10 years, long term. Um, and there's a bunch of different strategies in here. You guys can all read and go through them all. Um, I think you guys were all presented this a while ago anyway. Um, but I'm here to answer any questions that you have about all of this. Um, I do want to reiterate what everybody said that it's not, this isn't stone, this isn't set in stone, this doesn't say this is what we're doing in the future and that's it. This is just a guidebook for what the future, what this group of residents that you all selected to represent you came together and came up with, agreed upon as a group. Um, and also that the land map is not set in stone either. <laughs> but I'm here to answer any additional questions that any of you might have or anybody from the audience might have. Some of these things in here, you have for a director of public recreation, we don't need one, that's Jack's job. Well, we, we also have in there that to hire an assistant manager, so while we were... Those should be slashed from it, that's not part of a comprehensive plan, really. Well, going into the... No, I got it. Going into the... Um, us talking about how the community is run and how the staffing issues are at the township level is part of the comprehensive plan, is part of something that we can recommend to you. And one of those things did come up while we were creating the comprehensive plan and you guys hired a, an assistant manager. So there are some things that have already been achieved on here, like the zoning map. You guys have been updating it and working with um, the engineers to do that. What about the section of us buying the fire trucks? 
Is it in here? It's in here. Which section? Can you show me the section you're referring to? It's in here. Can you refer me to the section? Are you talking about the six-year capital plan? Yes, by fire trucks. Okay. Is there a question that you have about that? Uh, I don't think we've ever discussed that at all. I mean, I mean, us. I, mean I know who brought it up, and uh, I know who brought up a lot of the other things, but it's never been mentioned or discussed. I mean, especially with us having three fire departments, and who would decide who gets the truck every year? Well, again, like we said, this, these are all suggestions, things that we came up with as a group that we thought would help um, our public relation, our public safety operations. Uh, Tony, if you, Tony, if you have a question, I need you to state your name and address for the record. We all did as a group. Everything was agreed on as a group. I know for a fact that this is what Bill Bond did. This was Bill Bond's recommendation two years ago. And he did the study. And it, it, just, it just a copy of what Bill told us we needed to do and told the township that they needed to do. So I don't think there's a whole lot of put in. And I'm not saying you guys didn't work hard. Yeah, I, and, and, I'll, and I'll agree with that as well. I mean, the, you know, while we had a, a diverse collection of residents here, um, you, know, you don't necessarily have uh, experts in every different area. If there's already an existing study that's been conducted recently on that very issue, and that's an important issue to the residents, I, I think that it was, you know, I thought it was a wonderful idea to incorporate parts of an ex a recent and existing study into the comprehensive plan as, as a way to bring that document into, bring that study and the results of that study into comprehensive plan as a guideline for, um, for our township. Uh, and and it, separate from that, uh, I actually, um, in, in my experience, personal experience, when I moved here from um, Oakmont, the neighboring community of Plum Borough, who I was a firefighter in Oakmont and in Penn Hills, and we, and, we, and we would routinely interact with Plum. Plum was actually in the process of doing that very process of the of Plum Borough was then purchasing the apparatus for the different departments with multiple departments, separate government governing bodies over each department. But the borough had taken on the, the, the um, responsibility of purchasing the apparatus, and they had come up with a rotating plan for each department to get them. So I've seen it work. So I think, I, on a personal level, I think that's a great plan if, we can, if this township can find the funding for it. And what again, kind of budget do they have? Well, You're again, talking probably, what would you say, Tony, a million dollars a fire truck? Depending on depending on what so you where are you going to get the money from? Where are you going to take it from? Again, this this is a recommendation for us to look to build plans for to work towards this over the next ten years. We may or may not accomplish every one of these goals within the next ten years. We might not be buying apparatus for the departments within the next twenty years. We might not ever do it. But it was something that we looked at and said that we liked the idea. We think it would solve a lot of funding issues for our volunteers, um, and it would help uh, ensure the provision of public safety, which is a very important aspect of our uh, township government. Keep in mind, too, we don't have to approve this plan as I'm is. No. It still has a process to go through. We can make adjustments or edits, and it will still need to go back to the Planning Commission and then to the Board of Supervisors for a vote. So if there's something specific that you have a problem with or you think needs to change or be addressed, 
please speak up. That's why we're here, so that we can make those adjustments, and then the final plan w either will include a more detailed version of it or will exclude it. We did, we did discuss it. We discussed it at length um, as part of the study. But we, we, we chose the things that we went with a fire crew to re recruitment and retention plan rather than, and if that includes, and if that comes out to, if we do a study that says, how should we recruit more firemen, you know, and they say you should have one paid fireman, it, we, didn't have enough, we didn't have enough in front of us to say, the best way forward is to hire one fireman because that'll make that person can help us recruit volunteers. You know, if something came out that said that, if we had a study that said that, then we would be all for it. The fact is, we, everything we looked at said that having a paid fireman it could go either way. If you have a paid fireman, that could deter people from volunteering because they might say, "Well, we don't want to volunteer because why would we volunteer when that guy's getting paid? Why would I waste my time?" And then we had people saying, "Well." Having a paid fireman, then everybody feels more secure, everybody feels safer, everybody feels like there's always somebody there and somebody that's running the scene at different accidents. So it was just something that we didn't put in here for, it's not something that we would be opposed to, it's just not, it's part of the firefighter recruitment and retention plan. I mean, and again, that's not something that we. Yes, I did. And I said I would like to see one fireman in each department at least. But well, let's they hold do. On, hold on, They've hold taken on. out by herself before. Hold on. Let's go I know back. That for a fact. Let's take a step back and go back to the comprehensive plan. If you have a specific question about the comprehensive plan, we'll take that. Otherwise, we're not going to get into attacking individual supervisors or members. Um, like I said, Tony, there is a. Um, there is time to make these changes. So if you think that there's something specific that needs to be added or taken out, let us know. That's what we're, that's why we're having this public hearing. Well, right. I like to say one more thing. You got to keep in mind too. If we're getting paid firemen, your fire department's not going to be getting all that money. Well, hold on, hold on. That's let's not talk. That's not a discussion for tonight. Let's talk about right. the that, comprehensive plan. Let's be on the scope of what we right. were presenting. My only question, truly, truthfully, is I do feel like a little bit it kind of addresses like staffing partially and that you're bringing up like FCO and um, assistant manager and that kind of stuff and then doesn't really address some of the other needs in the township as far as staffing goes. It seems kind of random and not really... Um, like focused on anything it, ju it just when I was reading through the comprehensive plan I was kind of like oh I don't know where that came from so there's to, a work chart somewhere it's you know I saw it I saw that but it goes into specific detail about like those specific positions I know what you mean and so it just to me that isn't maybe necessary in the comprehensive plan because as you see from the time you made the comprehensive plan, we have hired an assistant manager, we have hired an FCO. So when we're calling out specific positions, there's the chance that that could change in you know a six month or a three month period, which it did. So now that part of the comprehensive plan is almost irrelevant now. We call it complete. Yeah. 
That's what we called it. When, when you guys hired um, Jack, we said we just crossed it off our list, something that we had recommended. Mm -hmm. So maybe, and just a suggestion, take it for what it's worth, but maybe we take out those specific requirements and leave the org chart as a whole in there instead of specifically you mean the specific recommendations at the end where you specifically discuss the assistant manager and the fire and I don't know what page it's on although yeah, I could find it code. yeah where you specifically call out specific positions call don't call out specific positions but call out more general like an overview because to me that's what a comprehensive plan is so in other words, something more generic to say yeah. that um, the township should look at increasing professional staffing yes. in order to provide more comprehensive services to yes. its residents rather than getting into the specifics of what positions we should be looking exactly. at. Exactly, and so then you're more, specific. it's more general, it's more broad, and then it leaves it up to the supervisors and the staff to figure out, is that a assistant manager, is that a marketing person, is it an IT person, is it, what are the actual needs of the township at that time? Are you, just for clarification purposes, saying then we should have a, a bulleted list essentially saying, hey, here are the types of services that this role may provide, and the, the township would then decide, hey, that looks like an assistant manager, that looks like this or that, or just the the generic statement that Jason had said. Yeah, just like more like a generic statement. Like you heard from the community that you, um, that there needs to be more services provided. If, if there are specific services that maybe the community is requesting be provided, whether it be fire departments or FCOs or assistant manager, like you can maybe list those, but more general overview of what it is and not so detailed into like specific staffing needs, specific staffing needs, if so that makes sense. remove the org charts. And I'm not, like I'm one overall. board member, so I'm not saying like you need to do that right now, go change it. I'm just saying that's my opinion in reading through this. I think you guys did a great job overall, but to me that was something that kind of stood out. I just want to make sure that I'm, we're, all, we're all on the same page so that if there is that modification made, we're doing what, what is requested. Yeah, no, I get that. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I, I think we can all agree that, you know, we were we were very proud that you did, we checked something off our list when you hired the the fire code enforcement officer. We were we were very proud of that. So, um, I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. And, and, and real quick to uh, Tony's point, I don't think it'd be that hard to just add word and the recruitment retention section just add literally a sentence in there saying this could also include the the hiring of of uh, paid firefighters beyond just volunteering. It's a simple out of the fence. And, and now your, your thought and your idea, which might be the direction we go, nobody knows, that that could be added to that and it would um, cover your, your concern. Fair? Yeah. yeah. There Sounds good. Um, go ahead. We're going to open this up for public comment if your presentation is completed. So if anybody else has public so any, comment, I'll ask you guys to, yeah. to take Does a anybody seat. anybody other board member have a question before we sit down? Tom, do you have a question? Or? Okay. Okay. Um, go ahead. State your name and address for the record. Hi, Tim Markovich, 1009 Mayfair Drive. First and foremost, thank you, committee. I want to uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart for picking up the slack. I apologize because I was supposed to be on the committee due to my son being very active with hockey. I wasn't able to make it. So I do thank you. One of the questions I, I have is that and it, it is specifically to the land map future use. As I looked at the current zoning, and again, this is a guideline for everybody, I look at the current zoning, there is probably about five or six industrial slash light industrial properties in the current map. I'm trying to wrap my head around when I'm looking at your map for future use. What was the determination or how was the determination made that you're going to take a, a current industrial slash light industrial property and propose it to be residential? Because as a property owner of light industrial property, I'm very concerned with that, obviously, and I could li list the many reasons why. 
especially since the property that I own has been over half a century zone light industrial and it's being used as light industrial currently now. So I'm just trying to wrap my head around how that determination was made from going, you know, picking three or four different properties specifically on the current and changing it for future residential. So the, the biggest thing that we did was try to update the map. First, we tried to update it to where we felt it was currently. So areas that the last map that we were looking at that had been built out more with bigger neighborhoods, you know, we were changing the, um, the zoning from R1 to R2 or, you know, so that's what we did first. Um, after that, we really went through and decide, try to decide where we felt in the township would be the best places for commercial development, um, to bring business into the community, um, with the turnpike coming in, how to turn um, the exits off the turnpike into possible you know, little storefronts for people to get off the turnpike and come shop at. Um, that's really how the basis of everything happened. Um, and the only other thing that I would say was is that then we looked at the property surrounding it so that there wouldn't be specifically something spot zoned. Right. What's concerning about this is the fact that something that is already industrial slash light industrial is converting business into the township, and you're making it suggest. I'm sorry, you suggested it to suggest that to now go from that to residential. That having houses compared to business does not bring in tax money to the township. Then if everybody up there gets that cost. The, I'm not sure exactly where your property is. 6.390, but it, it's, it, it's actually it's right next to the property that Mark West owned. Mark West owns it now. We all understand how they went to the whole compressor station thing. Zone light industrial, been light industrial for 50 plus years. And you're recommending that property now by property board to say it should be residential. I, I personally, I'm not a lawyer. I personally don't believe. Well, again, we're not doing anything. Yeah. It's well, just a recommendation. Just, but, yeah. the, like, and I know specifically which piece of property you're talking about. Right. In that specific case, the thought was all surrounding property around it was residential. I mean, we, we did not go through every single person in this township's property and say this, this piece, that piece, this piece, that piece. We did a overview of this is the most important thing is to have everything be, for the most part, you know, what's the word I'm looking for here? I, I think part of the process, one, one of the steps that we went through, and actually uh, um, that um, Michelle was missed, was one of the other things we looked at was cases of existing spot zone and cases that we looked at the overall map and said, are there any properties in the current zoning map, and not, not, not properties, is there any zoning within the map that just jumps out at us and says, hold on, you know, and, and, and to your particular point, I, I think you're looking at a, at a case, it's, I think, 80, between, it's, it's 71 what? acres, 71 acres, I think their property is, and then you have, Seven, okay, and, and that's it, the, 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 that light industrial is fully encompassed within those two properties. So you're, look, so you're talking about roughly 80 acres of light industrial that is surrounded by Hundreds, perhaps, probably well over a thousand acres of of, re, of residential, and so that was something that when you look at it on a map, on, on a map of the whole town, just jumps out of you and says, "Whoa, that!" Now we all understand the history there and why that property was zone industrial to begin with. And I, and I'm, and I'm not Can I ask you why it was zoned industrial? When, when zoning was, my it was, it was, he owned it before there was zoning in Cecil. Correct. And it was a gob pile from the coal mine. And that's why it was industrial. 
Correct. It was the use of the property at the time when zoning was, when the state forced zoning upon the township. So, but the purpose of the plan, again, looking at our past and looking at where we want to go in the future. It's important to know, know those things. Why are things the way they are now? But also, where are we going in the future? And one of the things we wanted to eliminate was spot zoning. There's spot zoning that goes both directions. You have a residential property stuck in the middle of commercial or industrial properties. And then you also have industrial properties that kind of stuck in the middle of a large residential area. Those are things that are not, are not. If you look at it that way, if you go over black box, is surrounded by residential property. All them industrial buildings over there are surrounded by residential property. I mean, somebody's paid taxes for all these years on industrial property. You just can't take a paintbrush and wipe it away. But I think what these people need to know is, Dan, if I'm right, the owner would have to apply to change the zoning Dan, if you want to state your name for the record. Um. <laughs> Dan Dizeroff, uh Township Engineer. Uh, zoning can happen two ways. John can correct me on this. I forgot John was here. Uh, it, it can come through an amendment that is presented by the property owner or the, or the supervisors have the legislative power to change zoning also. So that comes either way, correct, John? Mm -hmm. Those are the only two ways it can change. And for you guys, it's a legislative decision. You don't have to, you don't have to accept zoning. You don't have to, re if you don't rezone somebody's property, uh, if they request it, uh, there, there's no appeal to that. It's completely a legislative decision. Thanks, Dan. Sure. Also to clarify, I know that the term spot zoning has been used several times, and spot zoning would be illegal it would be if the township had said hey we're going to just put this one property or these two properties i know it's not that's what i'm saying it is not spot zoning however um even if the township went through a process to say hey here's the comprehensive plan proposed future land use map here's where we think the zoning map can go um, they if they do say hey we're changing the zoning of this property nothing that you have on that property would have to be removed. It would be a non-conforming use because it was existing. So I just want to make sure everybody understands that as well. Is that I think we also have to, be, I think we have to be a little bit careful though saying whether or not something is spot zoning. I can't say that and truthfully you can't say that either. I think that's for a court or an engineer to figure out. So I think we just have to walk that line a little bit where we're saying like, where you're saying it's definitely not spot zoning, truthfully, like you don't know that, I don't know that, it would be for the courts and an engineer to figure out. So let's, again, get back to the whole comprehensive plan and with spot zoning, right. Prevent, like, with the right. <clears throat> right. I just am hesitant for us to say yes it is or no it isn't because truthfully, we don't know for sure. Um, it, or anybody else questions, comments for the record? You know him. <laughs> you can just tell me when you need somebody. I can throw a pencil at me or something. Uh, <clears throat> my name is uh, John Kosky. I live at 698 Miller's Run Road, Cuddy, Pennsylvania. We, uh, I think everybody's pretty much aware we own a lot of property in Cecil Township. Uh, one of the parcels, 130 acres on Rising Road. Uh, right behind the sewage treatment plant, which is right off the exit of the Beltway now. <clears throat> and uh, a more contentious piece is right next to 75 acres next to this lake dump up in Cecil in Buse, which has been historically, I think it's one of the oldest industrial sites that is in Cecil right now. It somehow amazingly, that's one parcel of property is 75 acres, it's somehow got divided into two zoning uses on one piece of property right now. It's got your commercial business development and industrial light industrial use. But the property has been used industrial probably since the 1920s, you know what I mean, which 
precludes. It goes back to what uh, Timmy had said. It's a, it was a god power. It was other things. But, you know, whenever you look at your comprehensive plan, I'm fully aware that it is a guide to guide the township. Uh, the board can adopt a comprehensive plan. It does contain zoning. I'm well aware of all these things. We went through this in South Fayette a few years ago, and the most contentious part of that comprehensive plan was industrial zoning. They wanted to eliminate all industrial classifications for some reasons or other, you know what I mean? And it, and I'm a little bit leery about comprehensive plans because I had to challenge the township on a comprehensive plan. It cost me in excess of $100,000 to challenge it and I, I beat the case because comprehensive plan, it's just what they were trying to do. And I think Cecil was on the right track to doing some of these things. It's, they probably learned from some of the other mistakes, whoever guided your comprehensive plan, whoever developed it for you. I know you had a board that developed it, but there was a lot of time and effort put into it. But I would really suggest that you like walk cautiously. I mean, you adopt something. I think you listen, you've had meetings with people, but whenever your timeship is on the way, I think you're, you're just talking about changing some zoning in the future things, your comprehensive plan guides you to that. But you really should look at, I think I didn't read all 165 pages of this comprehensive plan. I don't think anybody really did other than the people that put it together and know what's in it. But it, it should guide you a little wee bit more into like, you do need residential growth, but it has to be complemented with, you can't, you can't balance your budget on the backs of the homeowners. You need good commercial industrial growth to go with everything. And not reading everything into this thing, you've got mixed business development districts which are looking to replace some of your industrial zoning. I, I just think that, you know, without having a lot of input or a lot of what these neighborhoods would allow you to do, it's kind of hard to, to say until you really, your comprehensive plan, but I think your, your zoning should follow a few years after adopting a comprehensive plan to give more insight into how you're looking for your growth to go. And, if you want to just take for an instance my piece of property which is 76 acres on burnside road um you know i'm on burnside road i don't have good access that contentious piece of property is 80 acres or whatever it is on the other side which was an industrial piece of property and how do you what, what's the right piece for my property what's the right zoning at this time is it is it residential use which borders something on the other side by south point or is it an industrial business use that would about the piece of property that we have to wait to see what happens with, I guess. But that's why I say a lot of these things, it's hard to say what, what would be the best use, you know what I mean? But just basically, I know this is a public hearing and my, my input would be to, I really don't wanna see any type of drastic changes on the property that I own. It's, it's owned industrial at this point in time. I think a lot, more, a lot of work, they, they did a good job, but I think a lot more work has to be done in adopting this comprehensive plan to buy from past experiences, but I think you're on the right track, but you could adopt this thing, but I think you should walk cautiously at how you do with some of your zoning and some of your things. I mean, it's, it's pretty clear, it's a good plan, but it, it, they all, they take years. It took two and a half years to get South Fairs, and then it got challenged and it took another two years, but it, it's, I just put a little bit more thought into it. I mean, you having this hearing here tonight and you could adopt this thing, but I'd wait a little while before I adopt this up to the air out everybody's concerns, you know what I mean? To make it a good plan for your future growth addressing, which it does address a lot of the needs, but you need anything. I mean, South Fayette, Cecil, any township, I mean, we own property a lot of places, but you need a balance of all types of growth, industrial included, commercial, business, all of it, you know, but. That being said, that's, you did okay. a good job, but I think you need some work yet. Thank you. Just, yeah. I'm sorry. Just as another comment, I know I've said this a couple times, but I want to be, this is still a work in process. This oh, is know, not, yeah, yeah. This is oh, not right. on our August agenda. This is not most likely on our September agenda. This is just the first step 
in getting this adopted. So there are still many more months and modifications and changes to come. It's one of the reasons we're holding this public hearing. And I wanted to mention too, uh, we have to keep in mind though, it's not just a simple thing to say, well, if there's an existing use on a property and the township changes the zoning, that that use can still stay there. They're, they're, they can, they're grandfathered in, but uh, they're all suddenly under a bunch of new restrictions because if they're also instantly or suddenly designated as non-conforming because their zoning changes, then the restrictions are that, that the, the law says that, that conforming use can change. Uh, they, they have restrictions on how they can do any expansions. There's limits on it. There's also um, the, 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 the um, the, or the use uh, requirements that, that if you go, go to change the use, it has to be a, a, the same or uh, less severe, le, le, less industrial use that's there. So if you have an industrial business you can't, and you want to close and sell, you can't necessarily sell to another industrial use that might be a little bit more severe. You have to sell it to somebody who has either less severe in, uh, industrial use or commercial use or something like that. So it does impact somebody when you take their property who's already occupied and change the zoning and make them non-conforming. It's not just a simple thing to say, well, you can still carry your own, your, your business. Because in a way you can, but you, you're, you are uh, severely impacted for the, forever for the future of that property. Mr. Trent, would you agree with that statement or? About non-conforming uses? Mm -hmm. I think I'll concur with what you said earlier about spot zoning, and I agree it applies to the non-conforming uses as that's well. What, that's what I'm thinking too. We just have to be cautious about saying for sure that that is what would or wouldn't happen because at the end of the day, we really, we don't know. So, well, we'll just clarify that that is Supervisor Castillo's opinion. Um, any other comments, questions for the record? Any other supervisor comments or questions? So um, just again for clarification, this is a work in process, there are progress, there will be um, changes made and adjustments made and then the next step would be to go before the um, planning commission. So thank you and this meeting is closed at 7.52 p.m.